go live uh, on the slide deck here. We're just going to jump in, okay? Uh, Rico, thank you for being here. Uh, for those who have not met Rico before, you might want to look him up on LinkedIn. Hint, hint, hint. He is somebody who's greatly affected my life, and we're about to give you two hours of love and, and insight and depth that may maybe you haven't touched on in a while. And I, I see some familiar faces in the VIP Zoom room. There's the, those that are on the Facebook um, channel, the private group as well. And if you'd like access to that, go to givermarketing.com slash group if you haven't been there yet. Okay. Well, God bless you guys. Here we go. Let's rock and roll. Um, get ready for a two-hour experience of a lifetime. Um, just to give you a heads up, what you're about to experience from myself as I start in the first hour is a marketing blueprint that we're kind of known for here at the Giver Marketing Network. And uh, Rico is going to take the second hour and go deeper into identity and how, how we can really uh, dive into uh, our alignment, our assignment, our authority, and the purpose that God's given us and some of those kind of things. And so we want to encourage you to kind of participate and stay engaged for the whole time if you can. Um, but if you'd like to participate in a 30-day challenge around marketing, um, just, just to give you a heads up, what you're experiencing right now is session number one of that challenge. And so technically, you've all signed up for a challenge without even knowing it. If you want to participate and continue, you're welcome to do that. If you don't, that's okay too. You'll at least get a little taste, a little taste and see, a little appetizer of what we do at the Giver Marketing Network. We work with a lot of causes and companies, community leaders doing good in the world. I'm Timothy Morgan, your founder, and we're jumping right in as we go here. Uh, Stacy is going to be helping us behind the scenes. She's our one of our marketing specialists. She works with a lot of our LinkedIn clients. Uh, she's also a team coordinator. Uh, she loves, loves, loves messaging and connecting. She's very relational. And so she'll be helping you even in the chat box today as we share our stories and do some of those kind of things in the VIP Zoom room and Facebook uh, group as well. You are welcome to network. This is an open network type of event. So in the chat box and comments and just wherever you're watching this from today, even, even if you're watching the recording, you're welcome to, to pop in and kind of kind of connect with those that you see in the chat, okay? You can pop in your um, Facebook links or your LinkedIn links so you can stay connected. That'll be healthy and a good part of what we're doing today. I mentioned the 30-day challenge and the 30-day challenge generally includes four sessions, okay? This is session number one of four. And if you'd like to stay along over the next 30 days for the challenge, challenge that we are currently in the middle of, or actually just starting uh, technically this month, um, you can earn a $1,500 marketing accelerator package. This is something that's available to anyone who completes the seven action assignments you're about to see on the screen. Get ready to take a screenshot and this will help you earn this reward. What you get is a 30 minute session from a certified marketing coach, some visibility service, some graphic design service upon request. And we're glad to be able to kind of get you jump started for the new year with that. This is what's required in order to earn that $1,500 plus reward. I'm just gonna give a little pause right now for those who wanna take a screenshot. And if you don't get a chance to take a screenshot, then you can always reach out to Stacy as well, but she's just gonna point you to the private Facebook group because it's listed in there as well. So we're glad to be able to give you opportunity for that. All right, there's other sessions that you'll be experiencing if you wanna continue the challenge. Uh, some would include LinkedIn, uh, efficiency tools and tips, other social media best practices, and those type of things. And they happen every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Let's jump into it. More than leads, ladies and gentlemen. More than leads. Say it with me. More than leads. We more need more than, than a list of leads, right, Stacy? Like at the end of the day, leads are easy to come by. Conversations and appointments with your audience are not. So with that in mind, we wanna help you build a foundation or set a foundation so you can build the house of marketing that will help you be successful in your nonprofit or your business, whatever you're leading, okay? 
Our mission is to bring positive attention to causes and companies doing good in the world. If that's you, then you're in the right place. Coaching is what we lead with. It's our privilege and it's how we draw out the potential within a person, a leader, or a team. And we know that coach, coaching produces way more results than if we were to go it alone. Yeah? Can I hear an amen or a yes or something in the chat box? We all need mentors, amen. coaches, guides. We need people helping us. We're, we're meant to sharpen each other. This is how it works. So we want to encourage you to be open to that. Our tribe is the most trusted network of marketing specialists on the planet. And we're proud to be a part of this network. We are highly rated and reviewed. You can check us out online. Just look up Giver Marketing Network or some of the names that we might uh, mention today, like Stacy Stockford or others or Power Partners. And you'll see that, the, that our, our name will come up. Highly recommended. And these are just some kind words that many have said about our network. And we're super, it's really a tribe or a cohort or a collective of marketing specialists helping causes, companies, and community leaders doing good in the world. And it's our privilege to do that. These are our core values before we get into the content for today. And so if this uh, resonates with you, then let's continue the dialogue, continue the conversation, have great time kind of going on the journey together, bringing more awareness and more attention, but more than that, appointments and revenue and all an impact and all the good things that come from getting positive attention to you and what you're doing. Who benefits from this training? Help me out with this, Stacy. Who benefits from this training? Like, how would you describe someone who, who's in the right place here? Anyone who is looking to move the needle forward in their business or um, in, their, in their marketing in general. So are you hungry to grow? Are you coachable? And are you passionate for what you're doing? So either you're a business owner and you need all of these things, or you are um, you are somebody who is in the marketing space and wants to learn more about it. So are you frustrated with the marketing that didn't give you the results that you expected? Then this is what uh, we're going to talk about today. And the blueprint helps us to achieve those results. Love so again, it. Yeah, this good, good information. information. And application of the results that we're looking for, right, Stacey? And it's yes, it's important yes, that yes. we, as we rock and roll together today, that we have a mindset of growth and that we're open to not just new ideas, but foundational ideas that we're willing to take steps on. I'm noticing uh, as I've been in the marketing space for years and years now and impacted thousands of organizations and businesses, that a lot of, a lot of business, a lot of leadership, a lot of organizational development is really around mindset and getting unstuck from those things that we know we can do to move the needle. So I love how you said that, Stacey, that, that's great. All things being equal, we do business with people we know, like, and trust. Hey, we, we, we're, we're loving the Bob Berg quotes today. We're, we're, we're enjoying the journey of, of learning and growing and trusting each other enough to be able to help each other in our respective organizations and our mission. But we also know that we pay more to people we respect. And so if somebody's gone ahead of us and done some things that have impacted the world, or maybe somebody's an author and they've, they've really put some thoughts and ideas and concepts together that are brilliant and they've kind of, ag kind of aggregated all that information for us to save us some time so we can move that needle, right? Um, this is where we wanna be. We wanna be open to those kind of concepts. Speaking of that, let's talk about the blueprint. This is, this is a very well-received, uh, simple foundational elements of marketing. And now listen, I'm, I'm, I'm the highest rated reviewed marketing coach in the country. So just pay really close attention. The, the foundational elements you're about to learn here are the ones that if you don't get them, you will not have a successful marketing efforts in your organization. It just won't happen. And so these are the non-negotiables, the four spiritual laws of marketing, if you will. This is what we need to have in place, improving for all the other stuff to work, all the execution, all, all of that to, to really take shape. We have to have this as the, as the soil for things to grow, grow, if you will. After coaching and collaborating with thousands of causes and companies over the last decade, a pattern did emerge, and that's what you're about to see. 
is this one, two, three, four step marketing foundation, this roadmap, this blueprint, if you will, so that you can get moving in the right direction when it comes to marketing. Kind of eliminate a lot of that frustration and get you going in the right direction so you can get those uh, appointments and uh, attention and, and all the effects of marketing going towards your company or cause. Branding is first, then visibility, then promotion, then nurturing. There's a reason we're talking about this in this order. It's because if you do it backwards, like most companies do actually, most organizations do this backwards. If you do it forwards, <laughs> in this order, left to right, you will see literally triple the results of somebody who's doing it backwards or a team or an organization that's doing it backwards. So let's pay close attention to the order. You're gonna have some micro assignments associated with each one of these sections to help you remember, but also not only that, to push some action into what you're learning today. So we're excited to walk with you through that. We're gonna ask you to share your origin story. So get ready to do that. You're welcome to even do that in the chat box and type it out even as we're talking now. What is the background, the aha moment, um, the why and how you help your who? Like, what's the, what, why are you doing what you're doing right now? Like, where did this come from? Uh, you're welcome to start typing that in the chat box just to give yourself a little bit more attention in the room, if you will, and to prepare yourself for this little action assignment, which we're actually gonna complete right now, today, here in the next few minutes. All right, marketing is pre-sales communication. So ultimately, at the end of the day, there is a high level of confusion around marketing versus sales. Which one is happening at certain times? How to know when you're in a marketing process or a marketing funnel versus a sales experience. Uh, marketing funnels or marketing process is very different than a sales experience. And we prefer to make it very clear which one is which, okay? And this is how we do it. When you're, when you're tracking your marketing efforts, you're tracking conversations, appointments, clicks, and engagement. When you're tracking sales, you're really only tra tracking some very, very specific things, transactions or exchanges of value of some kind. And some would even call micro transactions as a part of your, your marketing. And it can be, but you're really tracking your major transactions and your exchanges of value as a part of your sales, okay? And so we wanna make, make it clear that marketing funnel drops into the sales experience. They are not the same thing, but they work together. Uh, like a husband and wife or like, you know, good friends or, or like two pistons in an engine, like they work together, but they are definitely separate. They're definitely different. Okay. So it's important to note that as we rock and roll into the foundations of marketing, we don't train on sales. We train on marketing and we coach on marketing right now. You're experiencing kind of a group coaching or a, a group training kind of hybrid. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we love asking great questions. We're going to ask you about your story here in a few minutes. And prospecting is technically marketing, not sales. So when somebody says, hey, have you been, have you been able to prospect for those, those, uh, those fundraising folks who want to kind of help uh, make some donations to your organization or those who, who you would engage with for, for a sale of some kind, uh, that's prospecting. And it's important to note when you're prospecting and when you're in an actual sales meeting. Branding. Okay, section number one. There's four sections today that we're gonna run, uh, run through. We're gonna spend most of our time on branding. Why? Because it's the very first piece that if you don't get this, we don't get the right to go to visibility, promotion, or nurturing. It's not. It, it, it's like going in public with, with your pajamas or something. If you don't get your branding right, we're, we're actually more, more embarrassed. It's more embarrassing to go public <laughs> than, than anything else. And now we all start somewhere. So let's not get too judgmental here. Like we all start where we start. Okay. And we just got to improve it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Some people improve their branding very quickly. And some people it takes a little bit more time. That's totally okay. It depends on your, kind of your motivation level, your, your, uh, your intensity, your personality, and some of those kind of things, okay? But 
I will say this, what, you should, what you're reading on the screen right now is the best definition of branding I've heard of, seen, or, or experienced to date. If you see some of the key words in here and they pop out to you, please pop them in the chat box or in the comments, because this is gonna help you remember what, you're, what to be thinking about when you're establishing your brand. Now, listen, uh, we work with a lot of Christian organizations, a lot of religious organizations, uh, a, a lot of folks who are doing good in the world. And there is a, sometimes a thought process that, you know, if I just do good work, they will come. If I'm just on mission, they will come. It's like the old phrase from the, from the sports movie, right? If I build it, they will come. And I'm, I'm telling you, there are situations where like divine appointments or certain people do come. But if we don't put our nets out, we're not going to catch fish. It's just, it's just the way it works. Okay. Now, do we need to listen to exactly how to do that? Yes, 100%. I'm not going to start preaching right now, but I'm telling you, if we just wait for people to come to us, we may be actually dealing with a fear of failure. Can I hear an amen on that one in the chat box? Okay, so let's be really careful about how we hide in the corner. We want to get our we want to get our brand out there well, and and we want to encourage people to to and we want to invite people to a conversation in a way that makes sense for them. Okay, so experiences, reputation, Stacy. I don't know if there's other words that are popping up in the chat box, but uh, give me a nod or a, you know if there's any more than that. Let us let us know. These are what we want to think about when we're talking about our brand. We're not talking about a logo. Or a, or, a, or a mantra or a catchphrase uh, alone. Those are, those are pieces of that, but they're only the beginning, okay? So we want to be, be really uh, cautious of the fact that the definition of branding is very broad. It's very experiential. It's holistic in nature. It's not one aspect of your organization or company, okay? So if marketing is communication, your brand is how people feel when they experience your company or organization. It's how they feel. And all the empaths in the room are going to be like, yeah, it's how they feel. And all the, uh, all the realists or the, you know, the other folks in the room that are not, you know, maybe Michael, you can get shed some light on this too. But uh, other folks in the room are going to be sitting there going, hmm, well, it's not just what they feel. It's, you know, the facts of the situations, right? Facts and feelings. These are all part of the mix. They're all, yeah, put some, put some thoughts in the chat box, Michael. I, we, we'd appreciate it. But these facts and feelings have to work together. And it's how people feel that will allow them to remember you and welcome, welcome conversation on a deeper level in, in most cases, okay? And what's interesting is I'm not like a high feeler guy, but I know branding. And branding is about experiences and how, how it makes people feel. Like that's kind of the bottom line, okay? Either they feel closer to you or they feel farther away from you, depending on what's happening when they experience you, okay? It's just like any other kind of relationship, really. Who is your who? Find out who you're actually called to. Uh, Pedro Adayo came up with this phrase, I believe, or, or, or part of his team did. And that phrase, who is your who, is so brilliant. If you just think about like, okay, not just target market, like demographic, but like, what about the psychographic or the, what, is there a word called spiritual graphic or, you know, like, what about the, the, the avatar of the person that you're called to? Like, ultimately, who is your who is probably one of the main questions because who you're called to will help you give them an experience that makes sense. And if you're authentic with it, if you're kind of true to your purpose and your calling and your wiring and all that, that Michael and others talk about, and, and Rico is going to be sharing with us on a deep, deep level today. If you're, if you're really authentic with that, the right people will be magnetically attracted to you, but it takes a lot of work to communicate that. And part of that is your story. We'll talk about that in a second. This is one of those like, Kind of, kind of simple and 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 fun. Just almost like a personality, like 
assessment on a screen, like in a way it's super simple. And a lot of people screenshot this because they're like, hey, I need to dig deeper into this. And if you want to know more about like actual wiring and core tendencies and different things like that, talk to Michael Sharp, talk to Rico about identity and some different things. But ultimately, many of us know by being just a little bit self-aware that one of these three words is a strength. And I'd like you to, I'd like you to put in the chat box, which one of these three words popped out to you immediately? Like, which one did you resonate with? Which one kind of describes how you, what mode you like to be in most often? Are you are you trying to bring clarity to yourself and others? Are you are you are you constantly in creativity mode? Look, we're all we all have some level of clarity and creativity and consistency. It's like which one is the the superpower? Which one's the strength? Which one actually gets you up in the morning and says, "I want I want to do this first. You know what I mean? So which one's kind of the lead horse in the, in the race? Yeah, but- Irene saying consistency, Michael Johnson saying clarity, Rachel saying creativity, um, Rico saying clarity, and we have Michael Sharp popping in here, fear of failures depending on the filter of what kind of person you are hardwired to be. At Exos Advisors, we're causing the greater stewards of people by helping leaders honor, lift, optimize their people. People are mis- stewarded otherwise why do children why do kids change college majors why are we in the great attrition marriages lack oneness parents are mis uh under, parents misunderstand children clarity is uh what michael has said too michael sharp has said thank you for that that's awesome yeah good tip uh, uh good good heads up to what exos is up to as well uh, I, I would also I would also challenge each one of us to lean into our strengths when it comes to branding. If we try to be all things to all people, we will create a scenario where we're only helping a, a certain amount of people to a certain level. And so if we can find kind of that zone of genius where we're wired to actually help people in a certain way, your brand will become, you might be in the same industry as somebody else, but your brand is very unique. Enrico is going to talk a little bit about, he kind of has this, like, like your, your, your assignments and how you're aligned with other people and and your assignments and these kind of things later. But ultimately uh, you want to make sure that you have a clarity and a self-awareness and an understanding of yourself in order to develop your own like personal brand that will underpin everything you do. Because otherwise you end up getting exhausted doing the work that you're supposed to be do- doing. And we want to we want to make sure and be full of energy the best we can. I know that um, when it comes to the senses, this plays a big role in how we experience each other. And if we want to go back to seventh grade science lesson, the five senses really help guide us on how we can best interact with other humans. Sight and sound is what you're experiencing right now. In the near future, we're going to have smell, taste, and touch as a part of like VR and and AR experiences in the future. It's not going to replace actually being in the room with somebody because there's certain kind of nuances and some people would call it like an energy or something, but ultimately you can pick up on things when you're actually in a proximity in a room, that's very different than maybe uh, than maybe what we would experience with VR and AR. But I, it's important to note that this is happening. This is developing. So we need to look at this from a branding standpoint. What are we giving other people as an experience of our brand? Is it only through written word? Are we are we low on on visuals? Do we have it? issues with like when we're in the room with somebody uh, that people take us seriously like how does that affect our brand what do we what what's the lighting like in each one of our zoom rooms right now like all of this stuff the sights the sounds everything what's the quality of the microphone i'm using right now you know every everything from visuals to to anything sight or sound related especially when it comes to video is video is like the baseline right now, like this is the basics. 
what we're doing right now, getting on video together, kind of hanging out, doing this, this is like, we have to be doing this. Otherwise we're so far behind. We're gonna have some issues staying in front of the right people. Video is, is, a, is kind of a, a starting point. We're gonna be getting into a lot more video-based experiences coming up here in the next decade. And so we wanna encourage you to play around, experiment with as much video as you can. Now, what platforms you do that on, that's your deal. Like whatever you wanna do, whatever, wherever your people are, go fishing there. Like have some, you know, connect with your people there. Uh, authority branding is a big, big important thing. Partnering with people like Rico Macadori, partner with people that, you, that you've connected here in the room. Partner with the people that are on mission to make a difference in the world. Folks that are maybe ahead, ahead of you in the game a few steps. Partner with mentors and, and encouragers and strengtheners. That type of authority, which um, actually Rico is going to dive deeper into later, is super powerful. Okay. Now get ready. We're going to about to share our stories here today. Okay. An origin story is one of the main things that differentiates you from somebody else. Your personality type or your, your wiring or your core tendencies is, is one thing. Your, your origin story is another thing. Those are the two things I believe that differentiate you from everybody else on the planet. And so when somebody experiences you and your brand, which by the way, even if you have a team of a hundred, I was just on uh, doing some conversations and calls with companies that have hundreds and hundreds of employees that that personality type of the leadership will in fact, and in, in, in effect, the entire organization. So being aware of your personal brain is very important no matter how large or small your organization or company is. Core tendencies and your story. Those two things will separate you from everyone. It will make you very magnetic. And so what we're about to do right now is ask anybody who's comfortable in the room to share your origin story in one minute. It's very difficult for some people because putting them on the spot is not kind of part of their, 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 their excitement level, right, Michael? I mean, some people are like, I need to plan, prepare, and kind of get ready for this. Look like we can't just do this on the spot. For those who are a little bit uh, more on that end of the spectrum, please type out your origin story in the chat box. Just start practicing typing out and you don't even have to push enter, just practice typing it out. And if you feel like it's, you know, it's good enough or a good start, just push enter and we'll get you some feedback on it. It's really fun. If, if you open to um, being coachable and, and, and feedback on it. Okay. So ultimately, when you tell your origin story, you want, you want it to be something like this, okay? For years, I was buying, building, selling, starting small businesses from a teenage, from my teenage years, actually, and uh, also highly involved in nonprofit work, community leadership. I was a pastor for 15 years, and we were trying to help grow and get the word out about these organizations and, and this com these companies I was involved with, and I had an aha moment. Gosh. It's been really hard working with marketing professionals at a reasonable rate and relying upon them in a way that where they're going to be there tomorrow as well as today. I would run across talented people uh, and they would, they would be a reasonable cost, but they wouldn't be around a year or two from now. I would talk to marketing agencies and the price was astronomical because of their overhead. So what did I do? I started a marketing agency that was designed to serve causes and companies doing good in the world. It later formed into a network. And so now we have dozens and dozens of marketing professionals out there helping these same organizations reach out, get more attention, and make sure that we got good news being spread all over the place. That's my origin story in relation to the company that I'm a part of and that I founded. So that's a simple way to share, share your origin story in like, you know, just over a minute, right around a minute. And that's what we want to encourage you to do. Stacy, I'm going to call on you in a second and let, unless somebody else wants to jump in and share their origin story. I know Rico, you're going to share yours here in a minute with your presentation in the beginning. Your, so that's going to be fine. Who else would like, to, just two or three people would like to share their origin story at this point in our, in our time together. Who wants to share a little bit of their background 
and then Irene, walk. go ahead. I see you put your hand up there. You go ahead and unmute yourself and and share your origin story, please. Hey, everybody. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Cool. Awesome. Um, I I was born into a very modest family. My parents were immigrants from the Philippines. And uh, growing up, we were taught to go to school, get a job, and that will provide comfort and stability. And um, I ended up getting recruited right out of the gates of graduating with a BCom at the University of Alberta, getting recruited by the one of the major banks. And um, luckily, Luckily, they took me on because of my sales and marketing. That's why they hired me, because of my sales. I felt blessed because I had no idea what I was going to do at a university, like a lot of students who walk out of university with student loans. Um, I had no idea. And so I stayed at the bank for quite some time. In fact, a year and a half into my role at the bank, I was promoted to branch manager, and I stayed a branch manager for 20 years. It wasn't until my 15th year at the bank that I realized that I had I had really disappointed my parents, not disappointed them because um, they were disappointed in me, but I took a look at their finances and I realized that mom and dad, who were 65 at the time wanting to retire, they wanted to retire with dignity and comfort like most people or everybody does. They had a mortgage still and they had no savings. And I felt awful because I was a branch manager for 15 years and I hadn't taken care of my parents. And that's when I realized that at the bank for so long, I was taught to meet targets, sell to people. And that was what was we were all about. Now, don't get me wrong. The banks have great products, but they're not there to help the middle income family. So I left my job after 20 years. Three years ago, I decided to join a brokerage where I was able to help middle income families. And my mission is to help 10,000 families get out of debt. And by doing that, I just have to talk to one person at a time. And that's my story. Irene, I got to tell you, the fact that you were able to do that without saying your business name or go into, you know, the, the mission statement of maybe a, a, the, the business itself uh, was super powerful because now I want to know more. I want to know more about Irene like that. That just drew me in. So anybody else have a maybe a short story uh, around who they are, their, 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 their brand, like what they're up to, what their mission is? Who else would like to share? I'll go ahead and share my story. So I spent the last 16 years uh, working in dental offices, assistant, all the way up to office management. Quickly learned that uh, there was more out there for me than actually working in offices. So decided to take my skills that I had learned, my administrative and management skills, and transition them to being to working online. In doing so, um, I have met some amazing people, and I've been able to help a number of individuals reach out to their reach out to their ideal um, target, or ideal message, because from messaging that I send out with using LinkedIn and Facebook and other platforms, majority is LinkedIn. I also am still an old school fan of the phone. So if I get, anytime I get the opportunity, I do still pick up the phone um, and work with, with people's um, connections and clients uh, as well. So that's my origin story. And it's, it's, it keeps evolving every, every month. I feel like I've evolved into something new. So that's the best part about what I'm doing. Thank you for allowing me to share. Good job, Stacey. I, I always love hearing it because there, there is a kind of a progression that happens. Like your story tends to have chunks, right? And so you'll highlight one more emphatically, maybe early, like a couple of years ago, but now you're highlighting this more emphatically. And it's like, it keeps progressing. It's not like like anything is inauthentic or anything like that. It just, it changes in a good way over time. And so origin stories are not static. They, they generally evolve and develop really, really well if you pay attention to what's happening in your life. <laughs> All right, one more. We got time for one more. Who wants to share uh, a bit of their Mike, story? Michael typed his, uh, Michael Johnson typed his out in the chat here. So at the age of 17, I accepted Christ as my savior. I quickly learned God had a plan for my life and I began and I began asking him to reveal that plan to me. Two years later, August of 85, I heard the voice of God 
speak to me telling me to read Peter 1, by, uh, 1 through 5. As I read the passage of scripture, the voice of the Lord spoke, telling me that I am called to be a Bible teacher and pastor. He revealed that to me, saying, this day I have commissioned you, pastor and teacher in the city of Chicago. Oh, that's awesome, Michael. Thank you for sharing that. Notice how these stories are like all different, like some are from church organizations, some are from businesses, some are from, you know, from solopreneurs, some are larger from a, a, a team dynamic at a, maybe at a company. Like I, I love the, we're, we're a network. So like, there's all these different stories that are developing and they're all just as powerful. Like it doesn't matter who, who, uh, who shares it, as long as you're able to share some some basic elements. This, by the way, is the best use of one minute that you can have before you go on a podcast or as you're starting a podcast, as you're starting a 10 minute discovery call, as you're meeting somebody in around town, if you're part of a nonprofit or a ministry of some kind, like this is the most powerful one. It, in the church world, we called it testimony. Like, can I hear a testimony? Can you, can you testify or whatever, right? Like, it, in the business world, it's literally, I need to know who I'm actually in the elevator with right now. It's an elevator story, right? We don't do elevator pitches. We do elevator stories because it begs for more. And so that's the, 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 the really the magnetic aspects of marketing and, and doing it well and, and authentically and, and in a healthy way. So we want to encourage you, get to know your origin story so well that when somebody asks you what you do, Hey, what do you do? The answer is your origin story. And it might not tell them everything that you do, right? Rachel, you and I have been on phone calls for 45 minutes talking about what we do, but we started with our origin story. That's the only reason we would talk for that long, right? Because we get to know the, the, the core, the background with the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Old at the end of the day, if you get really good at your origin story, people will ask you for more. And by the way, there is more. Look at Story Brand by Donald Miller. There's a whole epic journey you can wrap around your business or organization that is absolutely game changing. We're working on some of that right now within our own network. But if we don't know our origin story, good luck trying to put in a Story Brand. Because it's not gonna it's not gonna develop properly. You won't you won't even know who like who you are, right? As the founder or a driver or a leader within your organization. Okay. So origin story is so important that we want to take time even now to be able to share some of those examples with you. And by the way, that's your first action assignment. So those who actually said yes, I'll do it right now, including the person who did the typing in the chat. Stacy, I want you to give them credit for that too. Okay. Whoever shared their origin story, check. They've done action assignment number one, and that's been, it's live on Facebook. We're good to go, okay? This is your action assignment for the branding piece. Now, with that being said, we're gonna go to section number two, visibility. Once you have an idea of what your brand is, who you're supposed to be serving, like how people experience us as an organization, as a brand of any kind, then we can go into let's go public. Let's become visible. Let's, let's allow people to find us. I'm going to go through these next three steps really quickly to give time for Rico as we jump into deeper identity conversation, okay? Can you be found? This is section number two of the four spiritual laws of marketing, right? Uh, can you be found? It's a fair question. When you, when you, when you, when you get a new computer and you type, type your own name in and city, and kind of the industry or, or organization, organizational sector that you're in, do you even come up? If you've moved around a little bit, maybe you don't. But at some point, you need to start coming up within the region or the industry or, or some, some, some aspect of that search. You need to start coming up as people are searching for you. Uh, we're going to see some statistics in just a second, but you want to be listed on some of these uh Kind of sites that you 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 produce by you're basically renting space on online through these platforms and directories and social media plat, uh, sites and different things, right? But 
your website is technically something that it's closest to ownership that you can kind of think of as far as digital real estate, okay? So you wanna make sure you got your website, that's great, but you also wanna be very, very, very highly uh, accessible on some of these other platforms as well. And it helps Google with the search engines. Um, at the time of this recording, Google's got a majority of all the searches across the world. So we wanna make sure you got a Google My Business listing, which by the way is free, but it's worth tens of thousands of dollars and it'll impact thousands of people over time if you grab that. Google My Business is like a non-negotiable. Right after your website, grab, or even before your website, like grab Google My Business listing. Like that's a big deal, okay? And why is that a big deal? Because 89% of people go online before making any kind of decision. Any, any kind of meaningful decision, they're gonna go online and kind of do some research on it, okay? And this was pre pandemic statistics. So just think about that. We're probably more at like 98% instead of 89%. We're somewhere probably in that ballpark, okay? So we're in the 90, like nine out of 10 people are gonna go online, check you out, make sure you're listed some, some different places, kind of see what you're about. If you're consistent, if, if you're like me and earlier in my career, I've moved like 12 times in 13 years. Um, I needed to make sure I at least have one central like like industry or something consistent out there that's kind of helping me stay co cohesive, right? And Google will will make that uh, Google will not penalize you if you're consistent. Let's put it that way, okay? You'll have more favor online <laughs> is another way to put it if you're consistent. All right, so how do you be consistent? Well, use this tool that we have available for you. It's on our website under tools, but also Stacy's going to put it in the chat box for you too at some point. GiverMarketing.com slash visibility. It's a no cost tool. We want to bless you guys today just for kind of hanging in there and, and, and digesting a, a, a big, a really a big appetizer today. Okay. Um, GiverMarketing.com slash visibility will get you to a free tool to help you get started making sure that you're listed on some of those directories. Some companies charge hundreds of dollars just to kind of give you access to that, that tool, but we, we just want to give, give that to you. If you need help with making sure your listings are dialed in, we have some people on our team that'll help you with that for a small fee, but uh, you ultimately you can do it yourself, okay? If you have the time and the patience <laughs> to do that. All right, Google reviews and pop-up tools. This is, one, this is the best way to get reviews online and add to that visibility, credibility, kind of uh, momentum of awesomeness. Go to givermarketing.com slash gbox, and this will help you set up your Google review, like quick link for your friends, family, associates, neighbors, <laughs> anybody who's willing to give some kind words about you online. Um, Google's pretty flexible on that. They're not like... Uh, they're not like monitoring everything and making sure that it's legit because of this, that like, this is a good way to just kind of get started. Okay. Uh, and we like to say it this way, uh, would you be willing to give us some kind words online based on your experience today? And then Stacy ends up putting a link in the chat box that says givermarketing.com slash kind words will allow you to say something nice about us. And that's literally what's happening right now. Stacy's putting that in the chat box. And if you have the ability to say some kind words about us with your experience so far today, then guess what? Our credibility starts going up and up and up online because we're generous, we're giving, and you're able to give some positive feedback. We don't ask for reviews, even though it technically is a review. We ask for kind words. Is that, is that a good idea or what, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, there's, those, there's always those 10 or 20% of people who are like, let me tell you what you did wrong online. And it's like, how about tell me that personally and say some kind words publicly? <laughs> Come on, people, let's do this. All right, visibility and credibility are hand in hand, but at the end, ultimately, you just want to make sure that you can be found, okay? And when they do find you, there's some kind, you know, some kind words happening online uh, or, or in these places that, that we, we're, we're referencing. There's also an offline visibility too, like your vehicles, your, your, your real estate, your offices, uh, wherever you meet with your clients. Uh, one, one big hint is uh, if you have multiple Starbucks in your, in your region, do not meet at Starbucks. 
that can be very confusing. Make sure make sure they have make sure it's like a mom and pop shop that really does it right and like has a cup like real really dialed in and there's like one of them in the in the region or something because what that does is it showcases uh, an ease of getting to that meeting uh, make sure your office is is easily accessible and found um, just physically like when you drive into the in the into the area like can you even find the signage to get to the door you know what I mean like wherever you're meeting whether whether it's in person or online, just make sure people can find you, okay? All right, visibility micro assignment for section number two is to run that visibility scan. That, that tool that we just showed you is actually the actual assignment. So we wanna encourage you to go ahead and do that. Post your results in the private Facebook group, which we are being streamed on right now. And you're welcome to go back and revisit and look at that. But if you're watching us in the private Facebook group right now, post your visibility results and you'll get credit for action assignment number two, okay? You can do a screenshot or you can post the link. Either one will work, all right? And again, givermarketing.com slash visibility will get you to the tool. All right, section number three, promotion. Promotion matters. I'm gonna check my time. Stacy. how am I doing? We need to wrap up here in a few minutes, right? For the, for our yeah, first Yeah, about 10 minutes left. Okay, I'm gonna fly through this. We are allergic to spam. For all, all of those who, who enjoy the, the actual food, I apologize, but it's just a good way for us to remember. We don't like spam when it comes to the online world, okay? We're just, we're just not in, in, interested. If somebody hasn't given us permission, we're just not interested, okay? So pr promotion to us is very different than spam. And we dis distinguish the two by making it very clear that we're gonna inform our audience, give a call to action, and give some kind of engagement opportunity so we have permission to continue the conversation. I'm not gonna go too deep into this for sake of time, but just remember the ice acrostic and it should help you just inform your audience with your true authentic self and what you're offering. Give them a call to action that's very clear, not pushy, it's just very, very easy. It's easy, but not pushy, okay? And then engage with them in an authentic way and you should be good with your audience. Okay, as long as you know who you are and who you're serving, you should be fine with the ICE guideline. Okay, um, informing is generally more of a monologue. Call to action is just super, super, super important. Next, uh, you can think of it as a next step, right? Uh, and then in, in a dialogue, in today's world, if you don't have a dialogue opportunity, if it's just a one way conversation, like a radio ad without any kind of like, like next step or something, like that is not how marketing is done today. It has to be, there has to be a dialogue at some, at some point built into the call to action, okay? Don't gamble, measure your results. By the way, I'm going through this very quickly because there's a ton of training on this kind of stuff all over the internet. And we're not really interested in reinventing the wheel or doing anything like that. We're just, we're just trying to help you make sure and get your mindset right around these aspects of marketing and get them dialed in foundationally, okay? So just don't gamble, measure your results, start with a goal in mind and then work backwards. If you're not getting the results you want, then pause, pivot and try again. You're literally in a series of experiments. Pivot okay? is a very important word that I think a lot of us have learned in the last two years is to, uh, to learn to shift and pivot for sure. Good point, good point, great point. So as we, as we kind of, some people are, are, are more adaptable than others. They like change. Uh, I would say find what's working, ride that horse, double, triple down on what's working, and then do some series of experiments with a portion of your budget or your time, and then, and then uh, double down on whatever's working, okay? If that, if that doesn't help you, um, then I would, I would say just be really careful of the shiny objects out there. There's a lot of products or, or, or programs that promise the moon because of a tool or, an, or, or a system or something like this. And at the, it's important to note that without foundations, you will not get those results, period. It's just not gonna happen, okay? But you will get those results if your foundations are in place. So that's kind of cool, right? So you got both, both ends of that. The report method is a great little, um, kind of another acrostic to kind of help you remember or screenshot something that says, okay, how am I doing in these aspects of promotion? Do we have a referral system? 
do we do we know how many referrals we're going to expect in the next 30 days stacy i think we're right right on track for like i think it's 30 referrals or introductions right every 30 days that's yeah, right that's in the range of, right definitely definitely is um for a giver marketing network for sure we definitely are there Especially as the network grows, it's hard to keep track of some of it, but we got a general pulse that we have somewhere in the neighborhood of, of around 30 um, expected introductions or referrals every single month. And that's that that we want to see that grow and continue to grow as we leverage LinkedIn and some other strategies that we train on. But ultimately, we know that it's a system. We know what to expect. This is not a relying upon the generosity of random people, okay? We know exactly what we're doing to generate introductions, right? Rachel, you and I were talking a little bit about making introductions for each other and some different things too. And you've done some and we thank you for that. And so that's a part of that. Like, it's just a very authentic, like relationship-based, like expectation and encouragement and, and, and really just part of our ask too. Like, hey, would you be willing to, to make some introductions to us online or in this way or through LinkedIn, okay? So there's other aspects of, a promotion as well that quite frankly if you don't have your referral system dialed in then you probably shouldn't be experimenting with too many of the other ones and look most marketing companies won't tell you that they'll say buy my stuff but i'm telling you right now if you don't have your referral system dialed in the rest of your your marketing budget is probably not being used as well as it could be does that make sense Referrals, 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 introductions, introductions, introductions. Somehow find a system for that. Promotion, uh, let us know what, what kind of ads, promotional pieces. We've had people post like podcast, links to podcasts they were on, um, business cards, uh, uh, a, web, a website even. Uh, you can post that in the private Facebook group and give us an idea of kind of some of your promotional pieces. This is like permission to promote yourself in the group. This is like part of your action assignment. Like, let us know what you do. Like, what are your offers? Like, give us some, some kind of, at least some kind of promotional piece that has your contact information on it as at, at least, okay? Post that in the private group. It'll be beneficial to you in multiple ways because that's action assignment number three. And for those who don't know how to get to the group or listening to this on some other channel, it's givermarketing.com slash group. We'll get you to the private Facebook group. You can also look up Giver Marketing Network. It'll come up that way in Facebook. Okay. Um, if you're listening to this in like a couple of years, it's probably called Meta at this point, right? We're, we're going through a, a brand change for Facebook. Okay. Nurturing. Let's land the plane, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready. Buck, buckle up for our, our uh, ascent, no, descent into the landing strip. Okay. Once you have branding, visibility, promotion dialed in, how do we make sure we don't lose track of our conversations with these people that are great and they're coming in and we're having great dialogue? Well, you need a follow-up system. We recommend a couple of basic things before you start buying the next fancy tool or buying the next you know, program or buying the, this or that. Like just, just dial this stuff in really quick or quickly and do it, do it as well as you can. And then consider that your nurturing or follow-up system, right? A lot of people do this, sales professionals, business owners, solopreneurs, we call them lonelypreneurs, but uh, you know, we've all been there, right? We need a team, but uh, ultimately we, we wanna make sure that we take our instincts and turn them into a system, right? Take what we know we should do and turn it into standard operating procedures, right? Stacy, you've been helping me uh, and some of the team members on some of that. But listen, 80% of sales decisions or decision meetings or decision appointments, however you want to think about it, we don't use a lot of uh, like hyper pushy sales language, but we'll say, you know, decision meetings, uh, 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 meaningful appointments, commitment appointments, uh, anything that will uh, allow us to get into a very meaningful uh, appointment where they will uh, buy something or, or there's an exchange of value going on of some level, then we consider that like a sales meeting, okay? Uh, after, after five trust-building interactions, 
is generally when those sales appointments or decision meetings happen. Um, in today's world, it's actually becoming a little bit more than that. So you, we're, we're trying to give you seven, at least seven today. So get ready. Number one is your introduction. Let's consider that a touch, okay? That's one, one meaningful interaction with somebody, your introduction. It's, a, it's probably the most important one. So we, we encourage you to somehow share your story. It, if the introduction's happening in a different way where you're not able to share your story, at least be very clear about your contact information and don't try to sell anything too fast. And this includes on your website and some other places where people might like hear about you, like your YouTube channel or whatever. This includes a lot of that. Like when people's, people's first impression, like an, even, a, even if you're running an ad and like that's their first impression of you, like don't sell too fast. Tell the story and then give them a next step, right? So we wanna encourage you in your introduction to take that very, very strategically. And uh, introduction, even when you're in a networking group, physically in a room, like don't sell anything. Not too quickly, like tell the story and just kind of go into relationship building 101. And then you can, what do you think a click funnel is? It's building credibility. It's showcasing awesomeness. And then at the end, they, they ask you to make some kind of micro uh, transaction, right? And even that's not usually the full picture. So you want to you wanna really start with the, kind of those narrative elements. Number two, send a brief email after you meet somebody. Make sure they have your email on file. Like make it automatic or do it manually, whatever you need to do. Make sure you send them a quick note. Hey, it's great connecting with you. Here's some notes I took from our conversation. If you'd like to circle back, here's, here's a great way we can do that here in the next you know, couple of weeks. And end that note with a question. Hey, I had a quick question about something we just talked about. I was just curious. Uh, you said something about you know, financing for this or marketing for this or business this or a personal thing here, this. Uh, can I help you with that in any way? Question mark. Like ask a question, continue the dialogue when you send an email. And this includes like one-on-one uh, -on -one emails and, and to some degree, even, even some of the, the larger mass emails that we can send out can include some very meaningful questions or action items that, that make sense. Number three, social media. Uh, just the act of connecting with somebody on social media, like we're doing in the room right now, when you give your LinkedIn profile to the room, just the act of sending a connection request or a friend request, that alone is a touch. That's saying, hey, I would like to take you on a date. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It, it, it's like, hey, I would like to uh, connect with you. It, we always think of marketing as like dating and then sales is like proposing, right? So that, that's where that came from. Uh, hey, I would like to connect with you on a little bit, of, you know, a little, I like get to know what you're doing or what you're up to or whatever, right? So ultimately, or, or, or as, as an action item, social media connection requests by themselves, whether they say yes or not, is a good thing to do. Now, when you get to your limits, like 30,000 connections on LinkedIn or 5,000 connections on Facebook from your personal profile or whatever, like there's other ways to kind of trim that out and then start getting a higher quality group of people that continually come into your ecosystem by deleting some. And then I, I go through and delete people who don't have profile pictures all the time they're probably not even like active on that platform so i just I, there's tools you can use to do that as well but bottom you know, bottom line is you want to send out these connection requests when you meet somebody period if you're at a networking group or online or in person or wherever like everybody in here should get a connection request from everybody else today like right now because this is really important give something they value Keyword is they. It's not what we value. It's not even what we know they need. It's what they value, what they want. A lot of people think in terms of with them, what's in it for me? And so we have to meet them there before we can guide them into awesomeness. Meet them where they're at so you can guide them into what they need. Meet them where they what they want with what they want so you can guide them into what they need. Now that gets into more like sales and stuff like that look, uh, for somebody else to train on. But all I know is we need to meet them where they're at. That's what I know. 
And so find out what they value. Give them a little bit of that as an encouragement, and then you can walk with them. The trust is, is starting to be built. It could be a physical gift that they mentioned, uh, or they needed, or it's obvious they need, you know, they wanted or something. Recommend a referral, an information, or a resource that they literally mentioned. If you can get permission before you give somebody something, it is 10 times as powerful as if you randomly gave them something. Get them, give them permission, get, ask them for permission. Hey, would you find it valuable if I sent you this? Nah, not right now. Okay. What about this? Oh, sure. That sounds great. Okay. Awesome. It's great talking to you. You know what I mean? Like you could, if you get permission, the impact on that is like, you've, you've said you're going to do something, you did it. They find value in it. And it's like 10 times more powerful than just some random, like, here's a gift. Nothing, nothing wrong with random acts of kindness, random gifts. They're just not great in the business world when it comes to efficiency. You want permission or suggestions from your audience in order to give them what they value. Invite people somewhere that you're already going to be. I should, I should find a way to put that on this slide. Invite people somewhere you're already going to be because that's the easiest way to do it. Now, listen, I'm an extrovert, so I do this naturally. But I'm telling you, if you put this as a system, Let's say you're a keynote speak like Rico. You're, 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 we're speaking together today. Like you've invited some people. This is awesome. We're having a party, right? Like you, you've done it. You've, you're doing it. Irene, if you're, uh, you know, having a guest on a podcast or you're a guest on a podcast somewhere else, invite people to that podcast. Like, like invite people where you're. Next time we meet, maybe you're you're wanting to join the challenge next Tuesday, invite people to that challenge. It's a no cost challenge right now. I'm not guaranteeing it's gonna be no cost next year. We, we're always looking and evaluating things. So get in while you can, but invite people, especially if it's no cost or low cost, like get them to the room. Goodness gracious, buy them lunch or do whatever you need to do to get to that room because it adds credibility to you. And it also deposits a little bit of awesomeness into them. It's a double, triple positive at that point. Personal note, uh, ask Stacy about that. She can give you some genius can, like language around texting, social media messages, uh, even snail mail, like how, how to send people cards in a, in a classy kind of way around the holidays. Uh, by the way, we recommend sending uh, holiday cards like in October. Be, beat everybody to the punch and make it creative. Make it interesting. We like sending happy birthday month notes or happy birthday week notes. We don't just say happy birthday. We gotta be, we gotta be a little different, right? Gotta be a little bit ahead of the game, a little bit different, a little bit memorable, right? Phone calls, a quick 10 minute phone call, nothing wrong with that. Especially if you don't know if somebody's, you know, if, if, if you're aligned yet, like why would you spend an hour with somebody you're not aligned with? What, what in the world? Like that's not a good steward of your time. Just spend 10 minutes on a phone real quick. And don't try to pre-qualify too fast with uh, automation or this or that. Like, just find your audience, get them on the phone for 10 minutes, swap stories, and then see if you want to go to the next step, period. That's it. Now, listen, there are ways to automate. You know, if you got 100,000 people on a list, you can get it down to 10,000 or whatever. And then you can do the 10-minute phone calls with the kind of the pre-qualified people. I get that. But at the end of the day, if you've got 10,000 connections or less, just get on the phone with, you know, three or four of them a day until you start finding people you're aligned with and then go to the next step with maybe like one of them. Be selective, pre-qualify, do all that good stuff. That includes donors <laughs> and it includes those who are in the kind of the business world. It's, it, we want to spend time with the right people with the appropriate amount uh, and steward that well. Okay. Uh, don't leave long voicemails today. It's not the day the, we are not in the world of long voicemails. It's like we used to be 10 years ago, but, but now it's like, Hey, if you're going to leave a voicemail, the only voicemail I would leave is like, Hey, it's so-and-so repeat your name, you know, twice, maybe. And then your phone number twice and call it good. Don't even tell them what it's about. <laughs> like, Hey, got a quick question for you. It, it's Timothy Morgan. Um, my phone number is this. Uh, again, my phone number is this. You can call me or text me back. And I, I just was hoping to ask you a quick question. Done. That's about as long of a voicemail as you want to leave. And I don't, we don't even hardly leave those. 
because there's so many other ways to connect with people. A phone call is really meant for more like a, a scheduled discovery call. That's really the most powerful use of that, that tool in most cases. There are some exceptions, but that's what we found. All right, let's land the plane. Your nurturing micro assignment is to list, you know, at least four or five ways that you follow up with people in an order that you prefer. Doesn't mean you do it that way every time. It's just standard operating procedures. Okay, I have a, you know, a, a quick connection request, uh, an introduction, quick connection request on social media. Then I send them an email, and then I, you know, then I uh, circle back with them through a text or something, and then I have a quick discovery call, and then a Zoom chat or some. Those are all touches. Like they're all different, right? They might even be the same medium or platform, but there's still different touches, right? So the, here's one of the keys to nurturing, ladies and gentlemen. Do not use the same platform to bombard people with spam. If it's LinkedIn or if it's text messaging or if it's email or whatever, whatever it is, phone calls, like whatever, do not annoy people. Stop it. Stop it. Have you guys seen that Saturday Night Live skit? Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop the spam, get more into, have, have some more relational intelligence. I'm just challenging you as a coach, have more relational and, and, and intelligence and circle around people in multiple ways and nurture them well as if you would a friend. Are they all your friends? No, let's, let's be real, they're not all your friends. but. Does it, it's okay to feel like we're friends, even if we're not technically best friends. Like that's an introvert extrovert conversation. I, I get it, but I'm just saying circle around in multiple ways with light touches will be more powerful than five heavy touches from one place. If you do that as a nurturing system, everybody who comes into your ecosystem will get the love every time. It's like, it, it, it's like clockwork. And then before you know it, you're going to have these sales appointments, decision meetings, and they're just going to flow right through your funnel. And it's totally organic, natural, authentic. And then at that point, now you can start paying for ads. Now you can start paying for, for different promotional pieces that get you from 10,000 eyeballs to 100,000 eyeballs and a million eyeballs. Now you can start pouring fuel on the fire at that point. But until you get these systems dialed, there's no reason to be paying for ads. Zero. These have to be dialed in first, and then you can start rocking and rolling. Okay, so as a quick recap, your branding assignment is story video. Some of you have already done that. Visibility is to quickly just grab that link that's in the chat box or in the comments or on our Facebook group and, and uh, run your visibility uh, results. Promotional piece, something that you've done that you're proud of, uh, that kind of promotes what you're doing. Uh, a nurturing process, you can literally type that out or take a screenshot if it's somewhere else already on a Google Doc or whatever. But ultimately, we just wanna know how you follow up with people and, and, and how that's going. Um, just a quick, quick, uh, screenshot or, or just type it out real quick in the group and we can give you feedback on it. We're a feedback chamber. We're a, a group that helps you in multiple ways. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, you're on your way to rocking and rolling. Next week, we're going to be talking about LinkedIn and some other things on Tuesday. Um, and that's part of that 30 day challenge. If you have any questions, we, I'm going to take those kind of during the break here, but we're going to be taking a break, a little bit of a bio break, uh, some, <laughs> we like to joke around where I'm going to go pray for three minutes and I'll be back, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> so we're going to take a little bit of break and then we're going to hear from Rico Macadori, ladies and gentlemen, here's, there's a, there's a, a, a little, uh, sneak peek that maybe Stacy can pop up on the screen too, when I stop sharing, but we're going to take a five minute break and we look forward to seeing you. Uh, Rico is going to bring the three A's of identity, my friends. And you want to buckle up for that. Do not miss Rico McAdory. I'm telling you right now, he's impacted my life and our team to such a degree. So yeah, here he is. He's going he's gonna to rock and roll in a second. So let's, uh, let's take some questions or take bio breaks or you know, take a break real quick if you like. And then if you can come back in the next four or five minutes, then Rico's going to drop some 
value nuggets. I'm going to check the chat box if anybody has any questions, any thoughts, any feedback. That'll be good. But we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Good feedback from Rachel. Stacy says she'll be right back. Michael Johnson has his LinkedIn profile. I'm going to connect with him. Yep, there's Rachel's LinkedIn as well. Irene's LinkedIn, definitely connecting with you. All right, Carrie, we'll connect on LinkedIn. That'll be good. Tracy, same thing. Yeah, it'll be good to connect with, with everybody on, on some of these platforms. That'll be good. That's a good place to continue the conversation too. Carrie, it looks like you shared some of your story there. Great, love it. You guys should all read Carrie Allen's uh, a story there that they put in the chat box as well. Looks good, love it. Yeah, Michael Johnson loved your testimony, man. That was cool. Good, good, good. All right, Stacy, Rico, how are we doing? Um, Rico, while, while we're uh, getting ready to rock and roll here, if you mm -hmm. want to maybe ask Stacy, or you can pop your LinkedIn. Um, Stacy, can you pop Rico's LinkedIn link into the chat box? We just want to make sure people can connect with him on a one on one basis, maybe ask some follow up questions. Because this stuff absolutely. gets absolutely. Give me one second awesome. here, and I'll get that for you. Then I know that uh, we're going to be flipping through the the slides here in a second too. So let us know when you're ready, Stacy, and then we'll we'll rock and roll. I am ready when Rico's ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Rico Macadori, everybody, let's all give him a, a round of applause, little claps, and all that. Uh, just love it. Love love working with Rico. Thank you, brother, for. Uh, presenting today and giving us some deep dive. Uh, without further ado, uh, the identity master, the Jedi of identity, Rico Macadori. Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much, my brother and friend, Tim, for inviting me to give a marketing family. Stacy, you all are amazing. Uh, I am honored to be here and thankful to all of you who are here today. And even those who may watch the recording of the replay. And I am excited because uh, of this story here. I'm the youngest of three children. And interesting thing about it is 
I found out, <laughs> I knew I was the miracle baby of the three. Um, my mom had her tubes tied and burned. And so, uh, according to the doctors, it was no way possible for another one to come. And technology to, back then is not like it is today. And so I found out more in learning because I was, a few years ago, I was wanting to know more about my journey. And I found out that as I was doing a deep dive, <laughs> uh, my mother had a, and yes, having a tooth tied and burned, they didn't know I was there because they thought I was something else. <laughs> and so out of the multiple tests that were run, the last test that was run was a baby test. And who do you think it was? If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here right now uh, and talking about identity. That piece was a turning point in my life to realize to stop looking for other people to do for me what I had already been empowered to do to impact more people. And the reason, Tim, and everyone here, this story is so powerful because I'm blessed to have my mom on the line today, right now, in this Zoom. I'm also honored that my wife is here as well. Uh, to, so I, this is this is very impactful, and uh, I'm excited about sharing today. But that's enough about me. Uh, well, here's a little bit more. Uh, yes, and being an author of this book right here, Your God-Given Identity, uh, that was an interesting journey. Let me say it again, Your God-Given Identity, all right, uh, because it really helped me focus more on releasing who I was so I can help other people become or get set free as well. And so that's what you're going to get a compilation of today. And we're expressing it right now through the three A's of fulfillment, the three A's of fulfillment. And this is important because it's really giving you keys to unlocking more of your true self and releasing real change. All of us, <laughs> the one thing that we're going to realize in this life is that change is the one thing that's constant, that's consistent. And so we want to say that, yes, our world is crying out. Our world is in crisis and is crying out for help. You may not, you may think that, and it may not, you may see some people crying, physical tears, and then you may see some people reacting in a manner emotionally that may not be as pleasant. But really, it's, it's an expression of frustration. And so they're crying out for help. And then there are different types of crises that we're dealing with today, right? So there's a relational crisis, whether it's among family, uh, there's, there's, there's turmoil, or even in, in business relationships. Political, we see the great divide with that. Economic, wow, we're, we, see the, we see a lot of the great resignation. Or a lot, of the, the, a lot of the things that you're seeing now, where it seems like it's a shortage, it's a stoppage, people are, it, it, economically, people are really feeling it in their pockets. Uh, and, and then also it's health, dealing with the pandemic uh, that, we're, in, that we're, we're, we're dealing with even now, some of the effects of that. Mental. How many mental cases or mental health issues? Most times we, we get caught up into the physical health issues. But a lot of times the physical health issues actually impact or have a mental effect. Think about, as we'll see, a lot of the crisis that's happening right now mentally is really weighing. And if your mindset is, if your mindset is under attack and you can't think properly, then it's going to affect your emotion. So we're in an emotional crisis. So one major problem at the core of the crisis, out of all that I've expressed, those different divisions or things concerning a crisis, here's one major thing that's at the core that is fueling the, uh, the other things that you saw. It's an identity crisis. Pretty interesting that I'm coming to talk about identity, but also bringing or exposing up, exposing the things concerning identity crisis. Many people don't know who they are. And so because they don't know who they are, they end up copying what is around them or what they see or what solutions are already there. Right. So let's look at a definition of identity crisis. Look at this. A feeling of unhappiness and, or, and confusion caused by 
not being sure about what type of person you really are mm. or what the true purpose of your life is. So let's say it this way. When you're not clear about who you are, you begin to chase instead of release. How do I know that? Because here you see many people, what has, what has happened concerning the COVID-19, the COVID-19 response. Here's what it's done. You see the few things there. I've listened, and, and there could be more, but these are things that I've seen and, and, have, and continue to experience, whether it's me personally or I'm talking with other people who are sharing these frustrations. It has really allowed people to examine the value of life, the level of effectiveness, uh, the personally and professionally. Let me talk about the value of life very quickly. Every person, every person that I've seen that, that whether it's someone I knew or uh, it may have been a prominent figure that has passed away due to death, my one question that always it's asked or runs through my mind is, did that person live full? Did that person fulfill the original why of why they were created? Then I asked myself that question. What am I doing to live full and die empty? Because many, because of the pressures that we're dealing with, as I've highlighted, it's easier to settle for what is and fade away rather than make the decision to impact. So what has this has done, it has caused us to really evaluate those things that are important and make priorities, all right? So here it is. So out of all that I've said to you, if this is helping you, you see that and you, you, you're, you're getting an idea of what's being exposed. Let me know in the chat. Okay. Because here's the thing I'm going to talk about now. What is the solution to breaking this identity crisis? What is the solution? And as, and might I add, even with this, I have heard this phrase within the last three months, more than I've heard, and it keeps showing up. And I'm going to be a blessing to you and share it to you right now or share it with you right now. That statement is imposter syndrome. I hear people personally dealing with it and people professionally. They don't feel worthy of it. And because they don't feel that what they have is worthy, now they start to chase other people. They start to chase what already exists instead of being or creating something that can be a blessing to help other people. So with that being said, what is it? What is it? What is the solution for it? There you go. <laughs> Discover maximize, manifest your identity-based leadership. Notice I said identity-based leadership. Let me say, it was great yesterday learning directly from a number one leadership expert in the world, John Maxwell, right? And he says this thing that has leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less, okay? Well, leadership, and that is so phenomenal and it is so true. But leadership is so vast. So what type of leader are you called to be? What's the subject matter that you specialize in? For me, it's identity-based leadership. So let's look at the definition of identity-based leadership. Leading yourself and influencing your team to win through your authentic personal value and character. Say it again, leading yourself and influencing your team to win through your authentic personal value and character. This is key because if you can't lead you, how can you lead the other people connected to you? There are more things, here's effective leading. When you really are clear about who you are, what it is uniquely different about you and the, and the solution you carry, here's the thing, you're gonna actually more is going to be caught than taught. People are going to be influenced to want to connect with what you do because you're connected to that mission. Your mission is so powerful, right? So here we go. Identity-based leadership looks like this. Here is the meat of what we're talking about today. The three A's. 
to fulfillment. Okay. Alignment. Assignment. Authority. Really take a screenshot of that. Alignment. Assignment. And authority. Let's start with alignment. Here it is. It's a position of, or it's a position of agreement or alliance. Okay. This is the next slide, Stacey. It's, 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 it's a position of alignment, or it's a position of agreement or alliance. Here it is. But here's what it requires. Re it, alignment requires complete surrender to the master plan greater than your own plan. <laughs> All of us were loaded. All of us came to earth with a unique solution. All of us carry treasure within us to release it, to be of impact. So in other words, what you carry was never here. In other words, what you carry was never here before you got here. So you've been entrusted to carry that. And as you carry that and you release that, now the imp that makes a, a great impact so that even when you leave here through a legacy, you will, your, 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 your impact will still be felt, not just today, but for generations to come. Okay? So here's another thing, lastly, about the alignment is don't chase every opportunity. Go back just a minute. Don't chase every opportunity but you position yourself to be the right opportunity for your people. Don't chase every opportunity, but you position yourself to be the right opportunity for your people. Let me say this right here. Because I didn't know at one time who I was, I chased opportunities. And as I was chasing opportunities, what I, all I was doing was I was chasing other people and their fruit, but I was neglecting my seed. You see, we were made to be fruitful and multiply. It didn't say be seedful, then be, no. You already have what's in you to release it. So why are you sitting down on what it is that you have? Once you get aligned, what you've been great at, this is the next thing you get positioned for, your assignment. You can clearly see your assignment. It's the mission, right? It's the mission of what you were specifically designed to do, right? It may not be what you want to do. Let me say that now. It may not be what you want to do. And it's nothing wrong with want to do or doing what you want to do. But here's the thing about it. <laughs> Sometimes our, what we think is best for us, we may not know. It's nothing wrong with being aware. But, it, but when you really don't know, uh, you think you have an idea and you have limited vision. But once you really get tapped into your assignment, you'll realize there will come moments when you don't feel like it, but you'll be inspired to do it, not just because of you, but because of the people that you're connected to, the people who need the solution you carry, right? So I will say, it may not be what you want to do, but you can't rest until you do it. I couldn't rest until I wrote that book not knowing what would come next. So what it does, lastly, it requires, oh, this is great. It requires you to be uncomfortable for a season in order to make a lifetime impact. Let me say that again, screenshot that. Requires you, your assignment requires you to be uncomfortable for a season in order to make a lifetime impact. See, here's the thing. You, many people want easy, but as you settle for easier, and things, you, it can get harder. But here's the thing. The thing that you're really called to do will challenge you with what may seem hard, but you'll have the grace to do it, but it becomes easier. Because you, might, because you are the trailblazer. You set the tone. And when, as a trailblazer, you take the hits. And as you're going through the hits, the people connected to you, they may experience challenges, but it's nowhere near what you went through because you were blazing a trail for them to come up and grow and be and live to the full capacity in which they were designed to live. So here's the thing about authority, okay? <laughs> this is, the, this is, the, this is the, the third point. I want to say this about authority because when we hear about authority, 
if you read the definition there, the power to give orders or make decisions, the power or right to direct or control something or someone. One of the things in that definition, when we see authority, most times there's a negative connotation with authority. When you look at authority, you see it as people who have, maybe some of you are, and I know I have, have experienced leaders who have been abusive, who have manipulated to get their way or you've, or you've been connected to leaders or experienced leaders who really don't care about your input to help the mission grow, but really it's about, okay, what it's about feeding their ego. And so when you look at authority, uh, there are people who have a negative view of authority because of a negative experience. But I want to caution you and let you know, let's take a look at that word a little bit more. Because you're going to see a contrast between the authority and what I'm about to show you right now, right? <laughs> when you take a closer look at the word authority, what do you see? Anybody want to take a, think, take a guess for a moment? Author. Bingo. That's right on the next slide. Author. Mm-hmm. So when you look at that, <laughs> let's define author. Let's define this. One who originates or creates something. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you see the contrast between authority and author? You were made to be an authority in a sphere of influence that distinguishes you from everyone else. Now I do have this, now this, as you see right there, look at what, look at the, the, the definition of, or the description of what I'm sharing with you about authority. True authority does not have a negative concept. Look at the, look at the four benefits right there. True authority is an authentic asset, which means you're not a carbon copy of someone else. It means it's originally you. You don't have to fake it till you make it. <laughs> you can be authentically or truly yourself, and that's what is attracting to people. It's not you putting on this facade as though you're someone else that you're really not. So it's an authentic asset that opens doors for you, yes, bringing awareness to people who probably were, they know something's wrong, but they, they are probably not as passionate about it as you because you're the one that's equipped to bring awareness to it. And then whatever the issue is, your solution is a, is a, is a solution to that, or your, your seed or your, your identity and authority to access that, to release it into the lives of people helps bring a certain awareness of things that they had, but they really never released, right? Then also it, bene it benefits to your people. True authority benefits your people. And then true authority, as I mentioned earlier, it goes without manipulation. Now, we live in a time where there's so much corruption. And so the, the corruption is like, it seems like there's no way you can have this kind or experience this kind of authority. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, you can. I am here to tell you. And so with that question, as you see right there, it's a question for you. It could be rhetorical. But if you know it, you may put it in the chat. But if not, hey, for another time, this is something for you to ponder on. What solution are you, keyword, authored to create that positions you as the go-to authority in your industry? <laughs> Stay right here for a minute, Stacey, okay? Watch this. Stay for, what, but this is, this is, this is a one uh, comment I would like to share. I think, Tim, you touched on this. I'm going to say it this way. There are many people or there are people who are in the same industry as you, but they do not specialize in what you do the way you do. There are people in the same industry as you, but they do not specialize or function or operate the way you do. Your solution is uniquely different. Now I'm going to ask you this question. You'll see it later in the, in the presentation. Hmm. All of us, 
Do me a favor. Everybody hold your thumb up. That fingerprint you have distinguishes you from everyone else. And if everyone else, if somebody else has your fingerprint, then there's a problem because now someone is setting up as an imposter or a fake version of you. So someone may, it, someone may look, you, it may look like it, but if you know your fingerprint and someone else comes along, guess what? And they try to steal your identity. That's, <laughs> You are set apart so much so that you were made to stand out, not blend in. You see, you see, so we have to get out of the comparison trap. (laughs) The comparison trap will keep you stuck, unfulfilled, and broken even more. Now, as we're wrapping up, if that was helpful, let me know in the chat. I'm going to say it's right here. The three things, let's look at them again, the three A's to fulfill. Alignment, okay? I'm going to say, I'm gonna, and now I'm going to say these three things, but I'm going to ask you these. I'm going to say it in a way to make, to, make it, to make you expand your thinking, okay? So alignment. Here we go. With alignment, what do you do so well that comes so easily to you, but it is a challenge to other people? There's another way to ask that question in that same segment of alignment as we're in review. From what we taught. Here it is. What wisdom do you carry that people always come to you to help them overcome their pain? You see how we expounded upon alignment? We're reviewing, but do you see how we expounded upon alignment by asking these questions? And here's one of the things I know about alignment, okay? I'm laughing, but this is one of the things I know. When it comes to alignment, you can downgrade or you can, you can overlook the gift you already have. For me, it's speaking. Now I, I didn't, it, it, I didn't think about it. I'm like, you know, I didn't, want to have anything to do with speaking. I didn't even think it was a career. I didn't even think. I'm like, I didn't know. But it was about speaking and it was the voice that I'd been given to communicate so people can connect with who they really are. I I mean so I know Rico, I speak I get I got a question for you. If sure. if uh if we're talking about alignment, <laughs> are we talking about not only alignment with our authentic self, how we're designed? Mm-hmm. And alignment with the, the the people that we kind of work with in a general sense as well. Or can you explain the, the difference between like personal alignment with our like God given identity versus yeah. like in association with alignment with others? Can you can you break that down a little bit? Sure, sure. See, when you're aligned with who you are, you become attractive to the people. That assi- who are assigned to you. So when I know, <laughs> when, I, when I surrendered my will and I said, this is it, what that did, that positioned me to partner with the right people who could help more of that gift come out. So when you look at alignment concerning the people you work with, there has to be a certain commonality in terms of the value. You may do things differently, but there must be a mission that causes their causes their why or what they're assigned to do to connect with yours. Right? There has to be that. 
So if you're aligned, and here's what I will say. If you are aligned with the wrong people, here's how you know. It will drain you. It will drain your energy. It will drain, it will drain you to the point where you'll, yes, you'll always, look, you're all, as you're going to the next level, success is always, everything meaningful is always uphill. Okay, we get that. But you're going to need people to pour into your life or even push you when, even when you don't feel like being pushed. Was that helpful, Tim? See, so when you look at alignment, it's important to connect with people who are not jealous of you, but they don't, they will not allow you to stay in that condition you're in. They're believing with you and they're pushing you up, not in the egotistical way, but because it's something that people need to hear from what you've been given, from the gift you've been given. Good case in point, Tim, as I move to assignment, as we're wrapping up. Uh, uh, alignment, watch this. By being connected with Tim, there was an alignment there from what God had given me and what he'd given Tim. Because he's, com he's committed to helping people get their message out. And, there, and, and not only that, but he was also helpful in letting me know to confirm that there was a message for me to share. So I've learned. So, so what it did by being aligned with my purpose, being aligned with my true identity and aligning with my, what I've been, been, I'm assigned to do, it allowed the right people like Tim and others that I, that I, that I connect with who challenged me to go higher and not settle for where I am. That, when you look at alignment, that is what you want to pay attention to. And that's why here, here is this, your dream and your vision is bigger than you. And if your vision or dream is something you can handle within your own means and you don't need anybody else, I'm just here to bust your bubble and tell you the dream is not big enough. Because any dream that's big, any dream or vision that you have that's been, it's going to challenge you because it's going to cause you to come up from where you are. And that's why you need to be aligned properly and aligned properly with the right people. Now, secondly, with the assignment, here's what it is with assignment. What problem do you see that bothers you the most that inspires you to create change? There you go. Then what it, on, in terms of your assignment, please think about this and we'll move to authority in terms of assignment. What problem made you necessary? What problem made you necessary to be deposited into the earth right now? And lastly, we're reviewing authority. Here's how I look at authority. I have keys right here. <laughs> See, when you know who you are, and I'm going right to it, when you have clarity of who you are, what you've been authorized, or uh, your authority, what you're licensed to do. Well, I'm going to add something to, uh, just so we can watch this. When you know who you are, when you know why, when you, when you know why you're here, what problem made you necessary? You, and you know your authority, what you are licensed to do. Authority is keys. If you don't know who you are in your assignment, you can have a rack full of keys. But you won't know which one to use to access. <laughs> and so, say this again. Clarity of your identity, Right? And wrapping this up, and I thank you so much for the opportunity today. Clarity of your identity, who you are, what you've been assigned to do, your, your, your why, why are you here, your, what have you been assigned to do. Your authority, what are you licensed to do, or what you are licensed to do. That positions you to properly market your solution to your target buyer. Many people, Tim talked about it today, and many people waste money and time because of a shiny object syndrome 
that was offered to them up front, but they didn't really know the process on the back end to really make that possible. So they waste money and resources on things they think will give them the quick answer or the quick solution, but they don't pay attention to what other processes are connected to that. And, but, but this is the key, identity. You hear about brand identity. Why is that important? Because when you are clear on that, you understand or you can get through the fluff and you don't have to know, you don't have to worry about whether or not this particular tool works. You don't get attached to the wrong tools because you already know who you are and you got to, you, know, you know how to leverage that marketing to a point where this is going to position my message or my brand to impact the most people. So with that being said, Tim, I thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, Giver Marketing family and all of you here today, I, I would love to connect with you if you have any questions or just want to take a deeper dive. Uh, link up with me on LinkedIn. Right there, you see the link. And I, I would love to be able to talk with you and listen to your story and see maybe for mutual benefit how we can help one another uh, in this journey that we're in through uh, through a thought through a si through alignment assignment and authority that leads to true fulfillment. Once again, I'm Rico McAdory, Identity Leadership Specialist, providing leadership techniques to build character. And I thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Rico. Every time I have hear you speak or have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you, there's always something new that I've learned. So thank you so much for this information. Rico, I have a couple of questions about, or a question about authority, but does anybody ha else have any questions about alignment, Kind of, kind of getting getting yourself dialed in that way. Uh, uh, your assignment, maybe your direction, your purpose, your mission, some of those kind of things. Uh, uh, maybe questions about assignment or how to find the, that assignment. Uh, while we have a couple of minutes here, uh, as we kind of wrap up our time together, um, I, I have uh, just some some generic, you know, general questions about authority uh, because I'm trying to get dive deeper into that. But Tracy, what do you got? Yes, I love what. Uh, Rico had to say, uh, 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 it's so uh, timely right now. Uh, the one question I have is, is around the uh, term that we hear often, uh, passion, you know, to discover your passion or, or go after your passion. I, I was wondering if, if you or Rico could kind of give some insights to that, uh, and see, see where it may lined up with those three A's, uh, the passion, if that goes right along with the identity, so forth and so on. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> when it comes to passion, I hear that all the time. I hear the passion about do what you're passionate about, do what you're passionate about. Right? And that's true. Yeah, you know, I think you should do what you love. But here's what I really feel like when it's really something you really love. I didn't really love writing. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't love it. But once I got clear about who I was and the message I have, it's like I didn't have the passion, but it's like I just took, I went ahead and did it, and the passion kind of came <laughs> along with it. So, sure, I would say that it's some indication. Like, I I knew of it, but I didn't, I didn't realize how passionate I was. I mean, I was passionate about speaking and didn't even realize. I didn't even think it was, I mean, my background is ministry, right? So, definitely. Sunday mornings or wherever the messages were, 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 were ministered to. And I wasn't thinking about it. I didn't correlate that between this was a message to reach people who are more, who may not necessarily been in the four walls. But when I look at passion, right, it is something that's very important because it, it almost is like an expression of, a, of being your authentic self. If you're doing something, that is not you and you and you don't have some type of drive even you may not start with a drive you may not think it's you but once you get into something you know it there's a certain grace that comes with it but if you're doing something just to do it like if you're doing it just for the money uh by itself that's not big enough because 
because if you because if, if you start and there's no money and money was your why, when the money's not there, what's going to keep you going? So I hope that what I was answered in terms of passion kind of simplified it or uh, what I've personally dealt with concerning passion. And you got to be careful too. You can and you can be passionate about the wrong thing. Like you can be passionate about opportunities that are out there, but it may not. And it could and that when that opportunity could be for a certain season. <laughs> And, but here's what the thing is. I did this. I tried to make a passion out of an opportunity. Not knocking, not knocking the company or anything like that. I tried to make a passion out of a network marketing company. And I was so caught up into like wanting to get to the top rank. But I, I didn't realize that was really like my training ground to learn certain skills. But it really wasn't for me to stay. So I had to really dig deep on that, right? So I, I thought I would share that with you because, yes, passion is important. But if you're not careful, you can chase the wrong passion. And what Tim gets on to me about sometimes is, hey, you can, you can get caught up in the shiny object syndrome and then try to make your passion, the right passion, try to fit in the wrong shoe or wrong vehicle. It's super deep, Rico. Oh. I, yeah. I, what's coming to my mind, just, just as I'm digesting, you know, there, there's mm -hmm. different different people experience emotions differently. Mm -hmm. And one person might call this a passion, or is it because they're feeling good one day about something, but then there's somebody else might call it a passion. And, and how we define words is probably, probably pretty important here, right? Because somebody else might say, no, I, I don't really have a lot of passions about a lot of things, maybe just, you know, just this one thing over here. And then another person might say, I got 15 different passions about 15 different things. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, so we got different personalities and people like different ways of defining words and what that means and different even cultures and just how we do what we do and all this. Right. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking about I'm like, okay, so Rico, what you've been challenging me on today mm -hmm. is finding the purpose behind the passion. Absolutely. Finding the, the alignment behind the thing, finding mm -hmm. the, the reason behind the activity or the mm -hmm. assignment or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. the, that, mm -hmm. that first piece, that alignment with the identity that you've been given by God or, or, or that you have from a birth, it, it, it just, if we skip that step, we're completely out of our element yeah is that what i'm hearing that's exactly what you're hearing you i think people this is what makes this message of your god-given identity different or i could i could sense it now uh, of what i'm seeing it really provides clarity let me let me let me share this testimony quick with you to answer your question a gentleman that came to me. He just finished our coaching program, private maybe uh, about a few weeks ago. Here's what he did. Here's what was interesting about that situation. He said, "I have the ability to make the money in government contracts, so the money making the money was no problem." He said that I didn't, but I never really met me. So this is an entrepreneur that says this. And he goes through it. As he's going through it, he finished. He, he shares some some challenges. After about halfway through that, he started to see transformation. And the, he recently just told me, like, "Hey, listen, I want you to know." And I and look, I I'm just sharing this with you out of humility. So I want you to know, we just closed a 3.2 million dollar deal. And I want to thank you for if I didn't go through the, what the, pro, the process with you, because he's in the aerodynamics and IT space, he had to transform his business from just a service business to a manufacturing business where they actually manufacture the parts in aerodynamics and IT. When he made that shift, that positioned him to experience that, that, that amazing win. So, yeah, it's, it's when you really look at it, it's the purpose behind the passion. It's not 
you if you're if you don't know the why, you'll do anything as far as a how, trying to get a what, but you'll never become who you really are. And so it'll Dang, be Dang, that was a mouthful right there. Rico, thank you for, for helping us today. Uh, I, I, I mean, if anybody wants to stay on for a couple minutes, what I love about you, Rico, is you're approachable. So when you say reach out to me on LinkedIn or, you know, no, find me online, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you can be found. You're, 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 LinkedIn's a great spot, Facebook, whatever. Mm -hmm. it, just to be able to connect with you, you're very approachable. Um, ladies and gentlemen, grab some time with Rico while he's still has time available because he's about to go on some speaking tours and circuits and different things. And so we want to be able to grab, grab, grab him as he's, as he's more and more, you know, more available now than he ever will be. So we really appreciate your availability and making yourself, uh, you know, open to the kind of the, the greater network, if you will, and really appreciate that. Uh, authority. There's a lot of conversation right now about leadership styles. Mm -hmm. uh, authoritarian, mm -hmm. dictator type names or ideas. And quite frankly, we can label and slap labels on all sorts of people that we don't like and just say, oh, they're authoritarian, they're narcissistic, they're, they're dictators, they're this, they're that. Like, okay, all right. That's an, you know, that's an extreme comparison, you know, labeling, I guess. But how, how do we, how do we find ourselves in a healthier version of leadership? Like speak to the leadership piece of this, because we're all leading something, right? We're leading our families, our relationships, our businesses, our ministries, whatever it is. Can you speak to that a little bit of that leadership piece around that word authority? Yes. Because true authority like I said in, in, in the presentation, doesn't manipulate. Because that's why clarity has to be so important. Because once you're really clear, you don't, you, you, when you see people who are dictators and authoritarian or domineering, they're really more like takers. But what I'm talking about when you're really in a, understand your authority, who you are and what you've been authorized to do, your authority you really are more so like a giver. You want to give people opportunities to actually transform their lives, not stay suppressed. But I think, I think if more leaders in the marketplace and even in ministry would not have a fear of losing or fear of you're going to take my position, here's the thing, effective authority really positions other people to take your position because you realize hmm, when, 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 when the verse says, be fruitful and multiply, think about that. You were made, oh, let me say it this way. I can say it here. Do you know that our creator built his business as a brand? a brand that could go on for generations through different people. So what I'm saying is true authority is not intimidated by the people that you lead. That's a nugget. True. I, I'm going to write that one down for sure. True authority is not intimidated by the people that you happen to be privileged to lead. You said a key word, privilege to lead. Ooh. You realize it's, it's, it's humility, it's servant. It's not, you're not entitled. You're not, you don't, you're not, you're not an authority for people to worship you, but you're an authority to, to position people to flow in who they are. And as a result of that, what's going to take place, now you can expand who you are through stronger leaders. So the message that you have because of the connection they have with you and the impact you've made in their lives, now you replicate yourself, not for the people to be you, but there is a certain connection you have with the leader who actually took you under their wing. Okay, so I'm making a connection here. If I'm secure mm -hmm. in my identity, I'm not insecure about the people around 
do, doing different things, you know, being a part of whatever. I, my insecurity level goes low because my identity and security in my who I am is high. Wow. Man, I wish I would have known Absolutely. that when I was preaching. When I was preaching for 15 years, I wish I would have known that one, man. I mean, that yeah, that's 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 real talk and empowering people to to take kind of take over where you left off. It, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's a type of servant serving people so that that you're not the center of attention for anything and everything that happens that that's a bit of an ego trap right i i wonder if when my parents told me to work myself out of a job if they were depositing something early that would help yep. with that huh yes dr miles huh. monroe our favorite teacher has a book called passing it on of course, you know, he passed away seven years ago, and he talked about that. Your once really a leadership position, I think it was when he was talking about on mentorship, and what he was saying was leadership. When you're in a leadership position, you realize it's a privilege, not a right. Uh, and at the same time, you realize you got to work yourself out of a job. That is a, that is definitely different because most people try to stay in the position, so they tie their identity to the position. So that's why it's harder for them to lead the position. So that's why many leaders have a tough time with succession plans because they don't have a successor, but really you're not successful until you really have a successor. Because if the vision dies with you, it was a failure. I heard Dr. Miles Monroe say that in one of his last interviews before he passed away. If the vision dies with you, your vision was a failure. So the book you have, the business you're supposed to write, the clothes you're supposed to make, the solution you have, even the songs you're supposed to write, right? If you never release that, you become a generational thief, not just for you, but for generations after you who could have been impacted by you. So that's why the grave is so full of wealth because a lot of great seeds and potential was buried. And many people today are experiencing so much frustration right now and they're taking out anger because they have not tapped in to who they are. And I'm telling you this last thing right here with this particular question. As things on, around us externally continue to crumble, people, the systems can make pro- promises and progress. But as they continue to crumble, it's only going to put pressure on you to release what you've been sitting on for a while. Many people have been in positions, and they, ha- and they know it's something they should do, but they don't do it. So, Tim, here's the thing. Here's the thing you tell me. We're help. We're helping people go from self-awareness to self-discovery to significance. Watch this through soul surgery. When you connect, when I'm working with you, this is why I know this is not for every, it may be everybody has a possibility, but everybody might not want to go through the process simply because you're going to have to go face the very thing that you, that you are afraid of. And even the very thing you quit, you're going to probably have to see it again. And I know that because personally, it happened to me. And I'll elaborate on that another time. Man, I got, I just saw your little Les Brown. That little Les Brown eyebrow just went up just for a second right there. I just saw that. I just saw that. That's pretty interesting. (laughs) We're hanging with Les a few weeks ago, weren't we? So that was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh. Listen, thank you for your time. Yeah. We've gone over because you have so much to, kind of, this is just the beginnings, the tip of the, the, the awesomeness, right? So, hey, ladies and gentlemen, reach out to Rico Macadori. Try to spell his name right. It's right on the screen a couple of times. You'll see it. Uh, look, at, look him up. Just try to, try, to, try to look him up online. You'll find him. But then also, uh, Rico, I, I, I want to I encourage people, if, if nothing else, at least take a look on Amazon, try to find your book. And, and get get that in uh, into the shelf for uh, give yourself a Christmas present. Dig deep into your identity as we go into the new year, and, and let's make sure and uh, encourage and you know encourage each other that way. So 
I, I challenge you to find some kind of resource or connect with Rico in some way. This week, Absolutely. like today, find something today. Yeah. Take action today to 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 bring a deeper blessing. It's one 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 thing to have information. It's another thing to take action. And I want to encourage you. Rico wants to encourage you. Take some action today, and we want to be a blessing for you. So God bless. We'll see you guys next Tuesday if you decide to join that. But it, if nothing else, wait, we'll wait, Tim, there. you're missing something. What do we got? What do I do? What do I do? Hold what up, hold up. What's happening in January? Oh, yes, yes. January. We have 13th. a huge event happening in January, January the 13th. We have an event. It is going to be a Giver Marketing Business Summit. We have 22 speakers, 22 minutes each, that are going to be presenting and bringing their genius to the table. And I encourage you all on Facebook Live watching us and here in the chat room with us, please come and join us. Um, there will be lots and lots of amazing information like you had here today. So come and join us and share that with your network as well. Please share it out. And That's a no and cost with... event. Uh, Rico is yeah. going to be one of the keynote speakers. He's going to bring some, some awesomeness there. And we look forward to uh, seeing you January uh, second Thursday in January, grab that link in the chat box. It's givermarketing.com slash summit. If you want 22 speakers instead of just two uh, coming at you and it'll be an all day summit. You can pop in and out as you see fit. God bless you guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Stacy, for helping me not, re not forget. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. God bless. <laughs>